851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. Today our focus is on London Heathrow and electric travel by planes. Heathrow announced just yesterday that the first hybrid aircraft or electric aircraft to use London Heathrow will escape all landing charges for a whole year. That's 365 days, depending on if it's a leap year or not. This prize is worth up to £1 million according to them and is what many people are calling a perfect move by London Heathrow themselves. Not only will this improve air travel, but it will also make it more efficient. It will also help London Heathrow maintain their position as one of Europe's leading airports and being a driving force globally for a change to electric powered planes. Currently Heathrow have said that they expect this to occur in around 12 years as manufacturers are now more than ever experimenting with electric jets for the future. With an estimated 100 plus projects ongoing to launch an electric aircraft, this 12-year goal does seem achievable, according to Heathrow officials, and with this incentive, it should spur on the development of prototype aircraft. The announcement was made at the Business Green Leaders Summit in London. Taken from the official event page, this day can be best described with the following. This year's Business Green Leaders Summit will bring together some of the world's top green executives, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, campaigners, and politicians to explore how the pace, reach, and adoption of green business innovation can be accelerated and the barriers to adoption overcome. Moving back to Heathrow though, the chief executive of the airport said, the next frontier is zero carbon flying, and I hope this prize will help to make it a reality at Heathrow by 2030. This incentive is brilliant in my opinion, and it's truly fantastic to see airports offering something like this to manufacturers and airlines. As Heathrow is such a busy airport and landing slots can be expensive, sometimes costing tens of millions, this incentive will no doubt lead to, you'd think, the rapid increase in designing and planning for the first electric aircraft. However, launching an electric aircraft and flying into Heathrow is all well and good. But there needs to be a demand, and currently that demand is still unknown. While there are ongoing problems, the idea of electric aircraft is still questioned by many airlines, and therefore the amount of money to produce this aircraft, and then have airlines order it, may not actually result in the manufacturer breaking even with that said plane. If this manufacturer doesn't break even, then is it really feasible despite the waived landing fees into Heathrow? It's a very important question. In saying that though, industry trends are ever changing, and in recent decades we've seen double-decker aircraft or quad jets be pushed out of the way, with twin-engine long-range aircraft coming into the picture. These planes are more efficient than that of the quad jets. 40 years ago though, we wouldn't have guessed that this would have occurred. We believed that the quad jets were the way forward. So anything is truly possible in regards to electric aircraft, we just have to wait and see what's going to happen. It's very, very difficult to predict now, even though manufacturers have launched these sorts of programs to get the ball hopefully rolling. London Heathrow hope by offering this prize, airlines will invest in electric aircraft and their respective programs to get the ball rolling as I was just saying before. This will then contribute to the goal of zero emission flights at the biggest airports throughout the United Kingdom. At this point in time, it could be EasyJet taking the reward as back in September of 2017, they backed electric aircraft with a deal being struck with the US firm Wright Electric with a W in the front. EasyJet wants a plane which could fly on its short haul routes throughout Europe and has actually outlined a 10 to 20 year time frame before they want to be flying it. The aircraft has a proposed range of 335 miles and would be able to transport roughly 220 passengers depending on the said configuration that the airline opts for. At this point, the first step is to build a prototype and analyse whether it's the best option going forward. If all goes well, this plane will rival the likes of the A320neo and the 737 Max or whatever creation is next from Airbus and Boeing respectively. Wright Electric, the firm EasyJet partnered up with, stated that these batteries that they were developing for the aircraft would power the propellers or fans of the aeroplane engine. With further design changes, Wright Electric believe that this aircraft will be the future. EasyJet also hope, with the third runway eventually being built for London Heathrow, that will be the perfect opportunity 
for them to launch operations out of Heathrow with this electric aircraft and then claim that prize. Meanwhile, the EasyJet chief executive said, We support airports who are encouraging airlines to operate the most sustainable aircraft, and we welcome this initiative from Heathrow Airport. The UK's aviation minister also weighed in on the announcement saying the following, The government is committed to cutting carbon emissions and promoting new environmentally friendly fuels in transport, including in the aviation industry. Adding, Heathrow's initiative is an innovative program which will encourage airlines to invest in electric, hybrid aircraft. Our aviation strategy will also consider further ways to support the development of cleaner, greener technology in the sector. Ultimately, having electric aircraft fly in our skies would result in a much quieter and cleaner experience, while also being more efficient than any other aircraft currently in the skies. That's even including your A350s and 787s, which now are very, very efficient. While some believe this is the way forward, like how the chief executive of EasyJet said, we firmly believe it is not if, but when electric commercial aircraft become a reality, Others are very sceptical to say the least. Some people believe it'll ruin the experience of flight, which, despite some changes in technology, has really stayed true to itself over the years, while others believe there isn't enough demand rendering all projects not feasible. We also have the more positive side, where people believe that this is the way forward and change needs to be made immediately, not in 50 years. Then it will be frankly too late. A concern that has been outlined is demand, and whether carriers will actually go for a fully electric-powered aircraft. But now, developers are actually eyeing an aircraft which could use electric power while also having a gas turbine engine. This would give airlines operating the plane the best of both worlds, and hopefully if this was deemed a success, down the line, aircraft manufacturers could transform their aircraft into fully electric aircraft, removing the need for a conventional gas turbine power. Comac have actually been one of the major players in the electric aircraft sector, surprisingly, and I know a lot of you feel very strongly about Comac, but their V1 Plus concept is actually very interesting and flew for the first time not too long ago. If you want to hear me go more in depth with that particular aircraft, please feel free to click on the card in the top right, which will direct you to that video on the topic. However, very briefly though, the V1 Plus, which was built in a 1 to 10 scale, will have four wings and be an electric powered aircraft, which will have wing mounted electric engines. This plane is expected to rival the A321neo and potentially Boeing's NMA, dubbed by most to be the 797 in the future, and Comac's ultimate goal is to actually improve aerodynamic efficiency. My thought on this is it's brilliant to see Comac taking this initiative to launch an aircraft like this. While we hear that projects are going on, it seems Comac are advancing quite well. Whether this will be a success or not, that's another question for another day. But it's certainly intriguing to say the least to see another manufacturer try to move forward and do something a little bit different that we haven't seen before. But it's all well and good to have an aircraft that can fly. What are the benefits to this aircraft? Of course, as I've outlined, it is more efficient through the electric engines, but it also will have weight savings due to the stiff wing, reduced trimming resistance, and really just a better overall uplift. So at this point in time, there are many benefits to purchasing this aircraft. However, a problem that may be encountered is people do not trust Comac. Now that is because they are certainly not as established as the likes of Airbus and Boeing. And this is another question which is being asked. Will airlines truly opt for a product from Comac just because it's an electric one? If we saw Boeing or Airbus launch their own electric aircraft at the same time as Comac, I would be inclined to say that these airlines would prefer going with Airbus or Boeing. I could be wrong, but that's just my views, and from reading a number of your comments, it's also become apparent that that's what you're thinking as well. While developers work together to hit their goals, Heathrow is hoping that with the third runway, they'll be able to be carbon neutral. The airport is currently working towards operating carbon neutral infrastructure within the airport by 2020. This will help them reach their end goal of being zero carbon by 2050. What are your thoughts on this announcement? Do you believe that any manufacturer will take up this opportunity and make an aircraft? We know that there are about 100 projects currently ongoing for electric powered aircraft, but then the next thing is demand. Can you see any airlines actually purchasing an electric powered aircraft? 
I've outlined in this video that EasyJet are definitely interested, but I'm keen to hear your take on it. Do you believe it would suit a particular market, whether that's Africa, Asia, Australia, America, Canada? Just let me know. I'd like to thank you very much for tuning into this video of mine. If you did enjoy it, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Don't forget, I've also launched my very own website. The link will be in the description. I've got a few articles up there, so feel free to check it out in your spare time. Anyway, I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly